This video is a look at Christian McCaffrey film from 2022, focusing on his time with the 49ers. He ran for 900 yards um, in 13 games he's played with the 49ers so far. To start to uh, them acquiring him, he didn't really produce a ton running the ball in the first four games. He had three games where he's held under 40 yards. Unfortunately for the NFL and the NFC West and, and the Rams and the Seahawks, uh, the other game there showed his versatility. His second game with the 49ers, he had 94 yards rushing, one rushing touchdown, one receiving touchdown, which I'll show you in this video, and then one passing touchdown. Uh, kind of unbelievable to have one player who can accumulate all three of those stats. Another thing to mention about McCaffrey here recently, of course, Dallas did just hold him to 35 yards on 10 carries and only 22 yards on six receptions last week. So you're talking about 57 yards of total offense from Christian McCaffrey. That's low for his talent level. However, in the last seven games overall, he's got four 100-yard rushing games. He's also got five rushing touchdowns and three receiving touchdowns. So eight touchdowns in the last seven games. Uh, incredibly productive. It's a, it's a match made in heaven, if you ask me, for 49ers uh, fans and their offense. I don't pretend to know Christian McCaffrey's contract situation, but after watching him with the Niners, you get the sense that they're going to want the guy there forever. We'll get into some of the film. We're going to start with run plays. Going to attempt to show you um, how equally effective McCaffrey is in the shotgun um, or under center. In the pass game, the run game, this is the first play I want to show you because it just shows so much of what the 49ers culture appears to be offensively. You got motion going from the bottom side of our screen to the top. You also have a pulling lineman to try to hold, I believe, this linebacker or possibly get him to flow with that pulling lineman. McCaffrey goes to cut a nickel who's blitzing off the edge and then slips out into the flats. And in this case, this linebacker's in a nice job of not going with that bait, that eye candy of that pulling guard. I think it's designed to get the ball to McCaffrey. I really do. I think these routes that you see developing on the right-hand side of your screen are essentially clear-out routes. Definitely this one is just a clear-out route with the potential for the high-low with Kittles or Kittle and then McCaffrey operating as the low portion of, you know, what some people would call flood, whatever you want to call it. And then you get McCaffrey catching the ball and then breaking the tackle of a pretty big, strong NFL you know, caliber starting defender. It's just a unique play that I wanted to start with. I'm going to get back to the run plays, to be honest with you here. I uh, wanted to start this with run plays from the gun and run plays under center. So you guys could get a sense of what he's shown with the 49ers. If you haven't already, you know, watched. I'm sure a lot of you guys watch every NFL game. I do not. I generally focus on just the Ravens. This is out of the gun. This is last week. The vision in tight space is, you know, it's, it's not unique in the NFL. There's so many guys who have this skill, but there's a lot of these plays where he's sneaking through untouched or maybe not untouched, but you know, where you have someone touching him, but his his momentum, his shoulders being parallel to the line of the scrimmage, him running behind his pads makes it look like there's this huge hole because he, you know, he's got great vision and the 49ers offensive line across the board does a great job. You got multiple guys on every play who block offensive linemen, tight ends, receivers, fullbacks. I mean Against the Raiders here, I'm going to show you a couple examples of, of, of their blocking schemes just being perfectly suited for a guy with Christian McCaffrey's speed, his agility, and his footwork. So this is um, an old-school play, if you ask me. Uh, faced it before at the high school level. What you have is you have a pulling guard who, in this case, his helmet is right here, and, and Max Crosby has gone low uh, trying to make the tackle instead of setting it inside. This helmet right here is the fullback, and he's leading off tackle. McCaffrey's job is to get <clears throat> downhill here and then veer this outside. Now, that angle I just drew you may not be accurate. We'll show you the rest of the play, then we'll pull this back to the beginning, and I'll show you, I think, the uh, all 22 angle as well. So the guard we're talking about pulling is this guy here, and then Crosby is the end. So the, the guard's going to be assigned to kick him out. That's one thing to notice here. And then the fullback, his timing, his timing was slow, slow, and then fast. Why did he have to go slow in the beginning? Because he had to get, let that guard get past him. I'm going to run this a couple of times so you can see it. To just, I mean, the 49ers run game is very intricate. Look at the fullback's speed. He's got to go quick at first to get off the midline, get out of the quarterback's way. And then he slows up to fit in between the quarterback and the pulling guard. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. 
So you got this real staccato type rhythm with the fullback there. Fast, slow, and then once the, he gets out of the guard's way or the guard gets out of his way, fast again to get out to the edge. Also, this tight end, you know, to the offense's right, our left-hand side of the screen, did an amazing job getting involved with two blocks. Touchdown run by McCaffrey. I know that the Raiders' defense was not very good this year, but even still, you know, this effort, this blocking scheme, the way these guys get after people, check the tight end out. I'll rewind it a couple of times so you can watch it. Just an amazing effort. He's also stepping inside of Crosby to let Crosby, you know, see what's happening in front of him. Crosby, Crosby, if you, in my opinion, is a little undisciplined coming at this angle and then trying to dive in to make the play behind the kickout block by the guard. He's got to condense this block. He's got to knock it in so there is no hole. And, and what it would basically would allow is he would condense the gap here. You know, a, a linebacker or a strong safety or whatever would be able to flow outside when McCaffrey bounces it and have better um, angles because, theoretically, you could jam up the fullback and the pulling guard at the same time. Spent a lot of time talking about this play. I love the blocking scheme. All right, under center against the Rams. Again, this is his second game uh, with the 49ers. And again, you have a situation where his, his shoulders are square coming through the line of scrimmage. And because of the scheme, he's getting through here relatively unscathed. It's, it's power, essentially. You have the kickout block here. You have the pull here by the guard. Pull this back and let you guys see it multiple times. And McCaffrey steps. He's slow, and then he accelerates through the carry on this downhill path. It's a beautiful run. The Rams are lucky this isn't a touchdown, but um, Rapp happens to be there. Wagner gets blocked by the guard. One of the tight ends seals the backside inside linebacker, so you can see the seam that's developing. Are they going to be able to do this against the Eagles? I don't think so. Um, as good as the 49, that run right there, I do not see them uh, running down, gap, down, down kick or gap schemes, most people call it, which just means down blocks on the front side and a kick out block by someone else. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to get rid of Jordan Davis and some of the guys that the Eagles are playing at interior D tackle like that. And I don't think you're going to get undisciplined play on the edges by the Eagles. But having said that, they did give up 2,000 rushing yards this year, I believe. And, and if I, that number is incorrect, you guys let me know in the comment section. 4.6 yards per carry. Stuff like this, I think, would be better suited for the Niners. Getting people moving, meaning getting their line moving in one direction, giving McCaffrey the ability to read it, and then find the hole, which puts a lot of stress on the inside linebackers for the defense. Not saying the Eagles don't have good ones, because they do. Uh, in my opinion, they'll be better with zone and stretch schemes than they will with gap schemes, power stuff. I might be wrong, and if so, then you know, remind me of it after the game. I might do a reaction video for that one. I'll definitely do a reaction video for the Bengals-Chiefs game. All right, against the Seahawks, this stretch play in the playoffs – it's it's a beautiful concept, and the way again the way they block this is exquisite. It's a sixty eight yard run down the left sideline. He almost takes it to the house. All right, when Kittle's come through here, watch what watch what the fullback does. Makes it look like he's going to get the edge defender. And there's a play that a lot of teams run with you know two tight ends or sometimes a tight end and a fullback where. You step to the edge player as the front side tight end or fullback, and then the other edge, the other, excuse me, the other H back or, or, or tight end engages him late and basically tries to take that edge player and expand him that way. Just kick him out. It's a delayed double team concept. But that's not what the Niners are doing here. They're faking the block with the fullback, and then he's leaving him, letting the tackle go get him. And I'm going to be honest with you. I believe the San Francisco 49ers attack Tariq Woolen. Uh, if you're a 49ers fan or a Seahawks fan and and you you know have more knowledge about it than me, let me know. But it seemed like big plays by this 49ers team happened to Tariq Woolen's side uh, more recently in the, in the regular season in general and then also against the 49ers. All right, so then the fullback is faking it and then cracking the inside linebacker. You got this huge collision right here. Kittle's getting through here, getting out on Tariq Woolen, who's unblocked. It's a mismatch, and then the receiver, Brandon Ayuk, who was lined up out wide, closest to the sideline, the number one receiver, Woolen was lined up on him. He released inside and went and got the safety. Amazing blocking scheme. Uh, just basically, it's just basically pin and pull someone, except this case, the puller is Kittle from, from the backside. 
whether it's the shotgun or under center, you know, Christian McCaffrey's got all the skills. All right, one back power. It'll pull in the left guard. And again, he's kicking out Crosby, who's going low. And you can see the vision that McCaffrey's got. He knows the track he's got to run on. Kittle again is stepping out. The problem for the Raiders is they're playing man here. So as Kittle goes to block down on the inside linebacker, this guy goes too. So they're subtracting one from the point of attack. I don't pretend to know how much man, how much zone the Eagles play. I would say in some of these situations where you have Kittle on the field, McCaffrey on the field, you might want to avoid man in some of these situations uh, because of their propensity to you know, use people in the blocking scheme, tight ends, even receivers, and basically you're subtracting a defender from the point of attack as the defense by playing man. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. I do know that the Eagles pass, you know, pass rush and uh, and man defenders are pretty pretty damn good. All right. Breaking the tackle, almost scoring here against the Rams, that same game that I referred to where he had three touchdowns or one touchdown receiving, one touchdown throwing. This is split zone. What's the effort here by this tight end on the front side inside linebacker? And then you're getting, I think, a sixth offensive lineman, I believe, kicking out the edge defender over here. My apologies. That's actually Kittle. He just looked huge. And then running downhill, shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. Wagner looks like he's available to make the play. Williams gets to him. I don't know that there's a hold here. I can't see it. I can't see the right hand at all. Wagner is there. McCaffrey just runs through it, of course, aided by Williams, you know, getting his hands on uh, Wagner. Out of the gun, again, again, against the Rams. And they do this expertly, they being the 49ers. They like to run the split zone and have run it to the side where you already have an H-back. So you just saw split zone, same play basically uh, from the flipped angle a moment ago. They're running this cutback to the side where there's an H-back already. And then this tight end is going to go and kick out, allowing McCaffrey to then wind this back outside of Kittle's block. This is by design, if you ask me. It's designed to uh, basically get rid of this 4-I or this D-tackle and what is the backside inside linebacker because of the flow of the play initially looks like it's going to go here. So that's why I'm calling this the backside inside linebacker. He gets pinned by Kittle perfectly. You got the kickout block. And again, the number one receiver is going to the state safety. It's a staple um, in this offense, staple in the Shanahan offense, leaving the corner unblocked at the point of attack. That's why I'm telling you that this is a designed cutback. This is not just McCaffrey's vision, which he has great vision, because of the blocking scheme here, the number one on the backside going to get the backside safety in terms of the flow when I say backside because initial flow was here. But I believe it's a design cutback, a design windback, beautifully executed to leave the corner unblocked, make him tackle people instead of covering people. And I think that's the thing that makes it difficult to defend the, the Shanahan run game. All right, against the Seahawks, a seven-man front. Downhill, McCaffrey can run outside, off tackle, toss plays. You know, he can throw the damn ball if you toss it to him. This one is a, a neat variation on a kick scheme. Some would still call it split zone because you have two backs in the backfield. The fullback is going opposite to kick out the edge defender, and McCaffrey is coming downhill now. So it's not exactly split zone from the same standpoint of the previous play where he you know, wound it back against the Rams. And again, you have the number one receiver, in this case, Brandon Ayuk, who I find to be – he's number two receiver. I'm sorry, Samuel went in motion – who I find to be a willing blocker. I'm not saying he's a great block, blocker on every snap, but I really like him. So these guys are stacked twins. Same play, all 22 angle. Samuel's going to go in motion. What the hell do you do if you're the Eagles? And they motion Debo Samuel into the backfield like this, and you have the fullback on this side. Because what this could be is it could be you know, the fullback lead to the edge, and they hand it to Debo Samuel. you got to respect that. And you'll even see the corner for the Seahawks widen up here. I think the Eagles have their hands full, as good as that defense is, and I recognize that they are very good. I think they have their hands full in trying to stop the run at without opening themselves up to the pass. All right, so McCaffrey skills as a receiver. I mean, it goes unsaid. You don't need me to uh, just tell you how good he is. We'll just let you see this play. It's pretty sick. Sitting out into the right flats. Nothing's developing for the quarterback. McCaffrey just has these instincts as a football player who's played a lot of games at a very high level, even dating back to high school. 
knows when to take it up the sideline. I think that's Jimmy G starting that game. Throws it up. McCaffrey makes a leaping catch along the sideline. Beautiful play. I mean, he has receiver skills, period. You know, but does he have NFL starting caliber receiver skills? Well, I mean, no, you know, because of his size and such. But he has receiver skills all the way around. I showed you this play earlier. This is the first one I showed you. I believe it's a design play to get the ball to McCaffrey or Kittle on the um, you know the the deep over dig whatever you want to call it. I think this is designed to get the ball to McCaffrey late, and I think the 49ers use him in an evil manner in some of this stuff, trying to isolate him on linebackers or even nickel safeties. Here you've got him and Debo Samuel who have exchanged positions. Samuel is the tailback, and McCaffrey is the X receiver. Kind of like this little RPO slant uh, pre-snap. Could be a decision by Purdy on what what he wants to do with it. Because you certainly have the line and the fullback working to the top side of the screen. Samuel, you know, at this point realizes he's not getting the football. That's why he's looking at the quarterback. And then McCaffrey just runs a slant back into the vacated space. Has the ball security to hold on to the ball. I think a 12-yard gain. Same play, end zone angle. Here's McCaffrey lined up at receiver. Again, Samuel at running back. You'll see the alignment and the coordination of the offensive line all working together. Really clears that window up for uh, Brock Purdy. The edge defender backside, uh, unable to get into the window, even though he gave an attempted swipe with his right hand. Beautiful concept. If you're a Ravens fan, you're watching this long. The Bills ran that play twice against the Ravens. Once successfully, once unsuccessfully. Last play. Ridiculous. Again, the second game, second game he played with the 49ers. Now, I believe they're attacking in a particular place here. They're attacking to the nickel defender. I'm not sure if this is conjecture on my part, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if they had an inkling that the nickel defender, in this case, I think it's Ramsey, would not come forward you know, in a committed fashion versus this play that certainly looks like just a swing pass. But as it were, it's a swing pass and then a double pass. And McCaffrey throws the ball pretty damn well here. Clean. Touchdown. I, I'm I'm going to be rooting for the Eagles. It doesn't mean I don't like the 49ers team. Reluctantly, I'll pick the Eagles uh, as the team that I root for. But these, in my opinion, both of these teams right now are executing at a Super Bowl level. Now, I guess it's possible that one team, you know, really runs away from the other one because of the high level the, the high level execution they have on offense, both of them. So I guess it's possible. I think this is like two undefeated boxers uh, challenging each other when one of them is, you know, a champion already and 28-0 and the other one is a champion already and 32-0. I just I really think that highly of both of these offenses both defenses are tough as hell. This looks like a uh, toss-up. I'm rooting for the Eagles, like I said, reluctantly. I like Jalen Hurts. I like the story, but watching this 49ers offense is fun. I mean, it really just is. As a Ravens fan who sat through a very frustrating season offensively, watching the 49ers offense, I now have six games outside of the the Rams game, the Raiders game to study this year in the offseason. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. This is a fun video for me. If you listen this long, first of all, thank you, and I appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the comments section if you enjoyed the breakdown. My videos are tending to be 20 minutes long at this point. Christian McCaffrey, I think, has had an amazing year. For the 49ers, like I said, 900 yards, eight touchdowns. I think eight touchdowns total, I believe, in the last seven games. Even though three times in the last seven games in terms of rushing yards, he's going 35 yards, 45 yards, and 46 yards. So I think that is interesting. I think there's a possibility that the Eagles play better run defense than maybe some of us suspect. Again, the data that I looked up earlier today indicated that the Eagles have given up 2,000 rushing yards this year, 4.6 per carry. So if that is inaccurate, you know, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm not saying that I think Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers are just going to come in there and, and run all over them. But I think it's possible that McCaffrey gets 85, 95 yards in the run game and another 45 or 50 in the pass game and really has an impact. It'll be a huge moment, especially to the boundary 
if the 49ers can get him away from the nickel defender and get him matched against a linebacker or someone like that, or maybe an edge defender who peels out you know, to the flats to try to prevent him from getting a clean release. I think Christian McCaffrey is one of the one of the two or three guys in this game that's going to determine uh, who wins the game. You guys let me know if you, A, enjoyed my breakdown, B, if you think I had any missing elements here to Christian McCaffrey's game. I probably missed some concepts, obviously, that the 49ers use him on. I certainly didn't wasn't able to cover all of them. But I had some plays saved up, all 22, mostly end zone angle, to show his cut ability, his vision, the way the 49ers are using him, the way that occasionally they're using him to get other guys open, uh, and the way that he's taking advantage of the opportunities, if you ask me. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know uh, what you think of the video, and, and let me know in the comment section who you're rooting for in the NFC title game. Appreciate you guys' time.